On September 22, 1979, the sensors aboard the U.S. Vela satellite, built specifically for detecting nuclear weapons tests, picked up a distinctive signal from somewhere in the vast expanse of the South Atlantic Ocean. It was a so-called double flash, a phenomenon typically unique to nuclear explosions. Yet a U.S. task force put together in its aftermath would conclude that this particular double flash was probably caused by something else. What followed was a story of political intrigue which led to accusations of a cover-up. Even today, no one knows for sure what caused the Vela incident. In a time when nuclear tensions are rising once more, the event seems more relevant than ever, forcing us to ask the question, could a rogue nation really have tested a nuclear weapon in secret? When a nuclear bomb explodes, the air around it is heated to temperatures of around 1 million degrees Kelvin, causing it to become incandescent. This causes an initial fast burst of blinding light. Light is trapped behind the initial shockwave, but then released as the shockwave expands, causing a second bright peak. This chain reaction is why a double flash is such a distinctive signature of a nuclear explosion. The Vela satellites had been in orbit since the late 1960s, and up until the September 22, 1979 event, they had detected 41 confirmed atmospheric tests by known nuclear powers. Each one of the tests had been characterized by a double flash. The Vela incident was pinpointed to within a 3,000 mile radius by the Vela 6911 satellite, likely near Bouvet Island between South Africa and Antarctica. The Frozen Isle is one of the most remote in the world, and at the time was home to a Norwegian automated weather station. The only recent event of note was the 1964 discovery of a suspicious lifeboat of unknown origin that was laden with supplies. By October 26, 1979, news of the Vela incident had leaked to the press, leading to front-page stories in the New York Times and the Washington Post. This forced the U.S. Defense Department to officially announce the incident, but they did not confirm whether or not it had been caused by a nuclear blast. Rather, they said it could also have been a natural phenomenon, such as lightning, a meteor, or a glint from the sun. In their confirmation, however, they failed to mention that the flashes were orders of magnitude brighter than any known natural event. It was time for someone to get to the bottom of the mystery. U.S. President Jimmy Carter demanded that a group be put together to look at all the evidence. It was to be chaired by Dr. Jack Ruina, a former head of DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. What came to be known as the Ruina Panel came back with this report in May of 1980, but the results took many people by surprise. Its main finding was that the light flash recorded by the Vela satellite was significantly different from light flashes emitted by other known nuclear detonations. It also found there was insufficient corroborating data, citing the lack of related ionospheric disturbances captured by the Arecibo Radio Telescope or Vela 6911 sister satellites. U.S. Air Force flyovers also failed to detect any radioactive fallout, although the flight logs suggest they may have been looking in the wrong place. The panel ultimately concluded that, quote, based on our experience and related scientific assessments, it is our collective judgment that the September 22nd signal was probably not from a nuclear explosion. The finding was controversial at the time, and new evidence and analysis has since brought the panel's true purpose into question. So what did cause the Vela incident? The Ruina panel's view was that the most likely explanation was a so-called, quote, zoo signal, a source of unknown origin that could mimic the effects of a nuclear explosion. The panel suggested that the double flash could have been caused by a micrometeoroid strike on the satellite itself. In their view, a meteor's initial entry into the satellite's field of view could have been responsible for the initial flash, and the spread of debris from the impact could have been responsible for the second. Over the next few years, experts from the Air Force, national laboratories, NGOs, and government agencies wrote papers about the Vela incident, but all were promptly classified. Even though some documents have since been released to the public, they've been highly redacted, offering only a glimpse inside. The documents reveal that most were in agreement. There was no solid proof that a nuclear detonation had taken place, but it was still the most likely explanation. Supporting the claim for a nuclear test were reported observations of an unusual aurora over Antarctica briefly after the flash, and the later unexplained detection of radioactive iodine-131 in the thyroid glands of Australian sheep. And as for the Ruina panel's meteoroid? Well, one expert from the Defense Intelligence Agency found that such an event could happen, although it would have been statistically unlikely, occurring only once in a hundred billion years. 
So while the Vela incident continues to have no conclusive official explanation, speculation has been rife that it was indeed caused by a secret nuclear test. Information from the files of Gerard Smith, Jimmy Carter's ambassador to the International Atomic Energy Agency, declassified in 2016, revealed that the U.S. authorities suspected the same thing. In an investigation concurrent to the Rowena panel, the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory had analyzed hydroacoustic data from the exact spot in the ocean where the Vela satellite had detected the double flash. Their findings suggested it to be, quote, unique to nuclear shots in a maritime environment. But if this was the case, then who was responsible? It turns out that a theory was circulating in the White House within mere hours of the initial Vela incident detection. This is revealed by a glimpse at President Carter's diaries, which were published in 2010. His diary entry of September 22, 1979 states, quote, There was indication of a nuclear explosion in the region of South Africa, either South Africa, Israel using a ship at sea, or nothing. Other intelligence sources also hinted that the flashes likely came from a 2 to 4 kiloton nuclear device. But why did President Carter suspect Israel and South Africa? Several factors can give us a clue. It was widely suspected that Israel had a secret nuclear weapons program at the time, and South Africa had reserves of uranium, some of which it was known to have provided to Israel in the 1960s and 70s. It was also an outsider from the international community at the time due to its policy of apartheid. In the intervening years, at least two spies have come forward claiming to have insider knowledge of the Vela incident. One of them, Commodore Dieter Gerhardt, a convicted Soviet spy and the commander of South Africa's Simonstown naval base at the time, was unequivocal, saying in 1994, quote, The flash was produced by an Israeli South African test codenamed Operation Phoenix. He continued, quote, The explosion was clean and was not supposed to be detected, but they were not as smart as they thought, and the weather changed so the Americans were able to pick it up. Why would the U.S. government have wanted to hide their suspicions that Israel and South Africa were behind the Vela incident? Some have cited the situation in the Middle East at the time as a possible factor, suggesting that the revelation of Israeli nuclear testing could have derailed any potential peace settlement between Israel and Egypt. It would also have seriously undermined the Carter administration's nuclear non-proliferation policies, in which the president had invested so much. So perhaps the only option for the U.S. government, having detected a nuclear test but being unwilling to name the perpetrator, was to cast doubt on whether or not a nuclear explosion had taken place at all. Almost 40 years have passed since the Vela incident, and for most people, it has been consigned to the past. But some people find it hard to accept that the U.S. may have deliberately misled the public to protect U.S. allies from accusations of violating international treaties. Some have pointed out that there is no statute of limitations on breaches of nuclear treaties, so it is time the truth came to light, and someone is held responsible. Still others remain deeply uncomfortable about the possibility that a blind eye has been turned to some country's secret weapons programs. It seems that when it comes to being certain about who or what caused the Vela incident, we remain in the dark. <laughs>